tiny microbes, basically ancient germs, have been frozen in Arctic ice for tens of thousands of years, just chilling there, since woolly mammoths were still walking around. And now, scientists think these little guys might wake up again if Arctic summers keep getting longer and warmer. Yep, you heard right, zombie microbes. Great. These microbes have been stuck in permafrost, which is soil and ice that stays frozen solid year-round. The top layer melts a bit in the summer, but the really old stuff, those Ice Age microbes, are buried way deeper. They only thaw if things get really warm for months, not just a hot day or two. To study these microbes, the team went down to the Permafrost Research Tunnel near Fairbanks in Alaska, a long underground hallway 50 feet below the surface, carved right into the ancient frozen ground. The tunnel stretches over 350 feet and lets scientists literally walk through thousands of years of frozen history. By the way, while checking out the walls, the researchers also spotted bones of mammoths and bison sticking out of the ice. One of the reasons why the researchers went to Alaska was to see how fast these ancient microbes could come back to life. Well, they were in for a surprise. These microbes don't need years, centuries, or magic spells to wake up. Just a couple of months of warm weather. Once they're awake, they start doing their microbe stuff, which includes pumping out greenhouse gases like CO2 and methane. And that's bad news, because those gases warm the planet even more. This melts more permafrost, which wakes up more microbes, which releases more gas. You get it. Basically, it's a nasty climate loop. Anyway, when scientists went down into the frozen tunnel to grab chunks of super old permafrost, the first thing they noticed was the awful smell. It wasn't just the stench of an old basement. It was something has been frozen for thousands of years and is finally waking up bad. Weirdly, microbiologists were happy. Such a smell is actually a good sign for them because it usually means tiny creatures, microbes, are still around. Back in the lab, the team soaked the frozen samples in the water that had a special kind of heavy hydrogen inside it. This helped them track what the microbes were doing later. Then they put the samples into fridges at three different temperatures. Cold, kinda cold, and not too cold. To copy what future Arctic summers might feel like if the warming continues. For the first month, almost nothing happened. Even the warmer samples barely changed. Only a tiny number of microbes started waking up basically a microscopic trickle of activity. But a few months later, things got more exciting. Thanks to the heavy water, scientists could watch how much of it the microbes used to build their cell membranes. It helped them figure out that the old microbes were making special fatty molecules that might help them stay alive in freezing conditions. By the six-month mark, the samples that were stored at the warmer temperatures had transformed completely. They became more active and started forming little slime layers. The scientists could actually see these layers even without a microscope. The whole community of microbes wasn't super diverse, but those that were active behaved just like modern microbes that live in unfrozen soil today. In short, those ancient microbes were definitely alive and got pretty energetic once the temperatures were warm enough. This matters a lot for the Arctic and for the whole planet because these microbes survive by eating old organic material trapped in the permafrost. When they eat, they release greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane, and the Arctic is warming faster than any other part of Earth. It means that the deep frozen layers might stay warm long enough for huge numbers of ancient microbes to wake up and start pumping out gas. Right now, northern permafrost holds about twice as much carbon as the entire atmosphere. If a lot of that carbon gets released, it could speed up the warming of our planet. It can lead to dramatic consequences, setting off a whole chain of huge changes and affecting basically everything on Earth. Extreme weather will start happening more often. Stronger hurricanes, heavier rainstorms, longer heat waves, bigger wildfires the oceans will rise too, which can flood coastlines and put towns and cities at risk. Animals, plants, and entire ecosystems can get thrown out of balance, with some species struggling to survive and food chains breaking down. People all over the world will have to deal with crop failures, 
water shortages, and damaged homes or infrastructure. Let's get back to our zombie microbes. The thing is, the study only looked at them in one place in Alaska, but there's a massive amount of permafrost all over the world in Alaska, Canada, Siberia, and many other places. And microbes in different regions might behave differently as things warm up. Scientists still have tons of work to do to figure out what's coming next. I bet you're questioning yourself. Could ancient viruses infect us? Well, most of the ancient microbes frozen in permafrost are totally harmless. They're like old bacteria that only care about messing with other tiny organisms in the dirt. But scientists worry that a few of these frozen germs might be the kind that can infect people, animals, or plants. And if that happened, our bodies probably wouldn't recognize them at all, because they've been frozen since mammoths existed. Basically, there's no immune system cheat codes for us. The risks of this happening grow for a number of reasons. For one thing, the Arctic is warming almost four times faster than the rest of the planet. Longer summers plus hotter temperatures mean more permafrost melting. So, more ancient stuff is waking up. Plus, people might start digging more around there. Companies will mine more, drill for oil, and ships can travel new routes. All this activity tears open ground that used to stay frozen solid. This increases the chance that someone or something comes across some ancient germ that just woke up. What would actually happen then? We might run into different zoonotic diseases, basically germs that jump from animals to humans. This already happened once. Thawed reindeer carcasses released anthrax, a rare and serious illness which then infected people and animals. Luckily, we do know how to treat anthrax. But what if something even older wakes up? Besides, our immune system might have zero defense. If a virus hasn't been around for tens of thousands of years, humans today would be like, uh, what is that thing? No antibodies, no memories of it, nothing. But the scariest part is that we don't know what's hiding down there. Scientists think permafrost might be storing trillions of frozen microbes, many of which we've never seen before. Some might be boring, and some might be super dangerous. So what if one such virus finally thawed out? The world would be dealing with a disaster no one has ever seen before. This wouldn't look like a normal outbreak. It would feel more like something out of a horror movie. First, the virus would be totally new and our immune systems definitely wouldn't recognize it. That means the virus would spread crazy fast, jumping from person to person. No one would know what to expect. It could cause weird illnesses, sudden fevers, or even something way more dangerous. Stuff as scary as the diseases people faced in old times. Scientists digging in permafrost already look for traces of those ancient diseases, so it's not impossible. Once it escapes, the virus wouldn't stay local for long. With people traveling everywhere and companies rushing into the warming Arctic for mining and shipping, the infection could go from one small Arctic village to major cities all over the world within days. Hospitals would fill up instantly and doctors and nurses would run out of supplies. Businesses would shut down. Food supplies could crash if the virus hit farm animals or crops. Shipping and travel could freeze completely. Fear and panic would spread around the globe almost as fast as the virus itself. There'd be no vaccine and no cure because no one has ever seen this virus before. Scientists would have to start from zero. In short, a zombie virus outbreak would be totally unpredictable and the modern world is certainly not ready for it. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.